On today's episode, we talk about the steel changes we made, and we also talk about our use of engineered lumber to make the walls as well as the floors flat. So Mike, last time we were here in our Western renovation, we were talking about this steel and how after demo, we uncovered some things that we weren't expecting. So walk me through what's going on. We found some hidden gems during demo. We went back and worked with the architects to come up with what worked best so we didn't have to compromise design at all. Well, we had three issues, essentially the three posts that we're looking at here, but this one was our biggest concern because this ended up right in the middle of our really nice pocket door that led from bedroom to the bathroom. So this one I'm looking at, it appears it's moved in this direction to my left, Yeah. 24 inches or so. Yep. So you can't just do that without considering what's going on above. I see an existing beam and I see a new steel beam. How was this determination made? And so, what did that do to our design? So we brought in obviously the engineer and where the new steel beam is was an old LVL done with the previous renovation. So replacing that with steel allowed us to do a bolted connection. So we got steel plates on either side, bolting these two beams together and allowed us to move this post over just enough to tuck it inside the pocket door. So now instead of being in the middle of a pocket door, you know, so like you would walk into the bathroom right smack dab into this pole. Um, we adjusted the shower just a little bit. This steel post will now become encapsulated in the wall and the pocket door is actually going to tuck just to the back side of this. So as these curved walls come around, it's going to stop. Pocket door will be there. We have our, um, I believe it's a 2-6. Yes, it is a 2-6 door opening. Um, the walls will continue and then the shower is over on that side. So, so our pocket the, door is going to be sliding back and forth. This is real. Skinning oh. right to the back side of this, yeah. So this was a real delicate move and you had mentioned up here. So you have this new steel beam. So my understanding is that this post, when it was in this position, it was actually supporting. Right on the splice. Yeah. yeah, so it was supporting the LVL and the steel. Yep. Now, if moving it, there was no physical way to attach that LVL to this steel. We, we essentially wanted to take a steel stretcher and make this one big beam, right? Yes. If we could. If we um, could. But by adding this steel beam up here and, pl and plating it together, that's essentially what you did. Yep. Now, we talked off camera about this steel beam is actually upsized. What, what was the reasoning for that? Yeah, so we didn't need one that large. It's a really small span. There's not a lot going on upstairs for loads and stuff like that. So we did that just so when we bolt the two plates on either side of that steel beam that we weren't going to be rocking anything. The, the web of this steel, if it's 5 eighths of an inch thick, the one that was spec maybe was 7 sixteenths, half inch. So upsizing it to match the, the thickness allowed that plate to be nice. Cleaner and connection. Understood. So this is how we solve this one. I see this post over here is all also moved. This one looks like it's moved 30 inches or yeah, so. Yeah, it's about 30 inches. So prior prior to it was on, it looks like, you know, kind of in the middle of the span of this beam and now it's right on a connection point. Where was this steel beam going to end up? It was actually gonna be right in the foyer area. Like when we walk into this master, it would have been hanging out right in the middle of the room. We moved it back and now where does it end up? Now we got it just inside the closet. We're really restricted on where we could put this one because we do have structural steel down below us and we can't, you know, we couldn't have pushed that over any further. We got it just inside a closet. We have millwork going in all the closets here. So we're just gonna make some modifications to the millwork. And this Hide will just that get post, wrapped, wrapped around. We'll and make the sh detail the shelves around it. Yep. Now, what did that do? So I'm looking up here. This appears to be a brand new beam. Yes. So this center section was gonna be replaced with a larger one. And they had originally spec'd out to field cut this first one, but being sandwiched in the middle of the house here, we have the finished third floor up above, kitchen down below us. It didn't make sense to field cut that. So what we did is we actually removed the old, replaced it, and it made the installation faster, smoother, and safer. So now we have a new steel beam that goes all the way down. And I see that this post didn't move. And you also have the existing LVL, but it appears that you guys did some work up there. We just added um, like a little gusset on the backside to catch the load of that LVL. Originally, I'm wondering why, because if it was already carrying the load, why would you need to add a gusset or a, an additional plate? But you made a good point is that when we had to put this new steel in, you needed some room, so working room. Yeah, and that post was not removed. So as you lift this post up, you kind of you, you get pinched on yourself. 
So we had to create a little bit of room on that side to slide the steel as far that way as we could and kind of shift everything. Because we also have a steel post inside the wall there that that was not removed as well. Right, this is existing, that's, that's existing. existing. That ends up in a wall, correct? Yep, that's hidden in a wall. With minor modifications to the design, we were able to kind of avoid a real big redesign by reworking some of the steel above and resituating the, the way that these loads were carried. Yep. So in the meantime, you know, you were working with the engineer and the architect on figuring this out, fabricating steel. I'm looking at our framing and I see engineered studs everywhere. And we've talked about this before. Let's start with the wall. It looks as though you've sistered engineered studs to the existing studs. Why is that? With this ultra modern design, the walls have to be perfectly flat, ceiling, floors, old walls, you know, they, they have some waves to them. They might not be perfectly plumb. So we go back, we establish essentially like a benchmark, and then we just go along the sides, sistering up with LSLs. And that's the way we found it was the fastest way to get a perfectly flat plumb wall. I noticed you guys start at one end and kind of set your, your first stud and then move to the other end and then similar to kind of how a mason would work yep. is string line all the way up. So everything in between is planar and true to both ends. And that, yep. that allows, you know, if you were to do one, in, if you were to do every one individually, they might be individually good, but they're not communicating with the rest of the wall. Yeah. Plus we also want like this wall to communicate with the wall all the way across the room. Kind of, you know, make sure things are running parallel and square. So it allows us, we get a couple points, set those points, and then you just connect the dots in between and it makes it, you know, a pretty fast process. So ultra modern, to elaborate on that, because I feel like there's a lot, there's a lot of interpretations of modern. Um, modern, at least from our standpoint, modern contemporary, ultra modern, that means we're using less materials. Le there's no trim. No trim. There's no baseboard, there's no casing. There's a lot of planar surfaces that are spanning big distances and having tight reveals and tight returns that waves in the wall and, and things that, you know, ultimately when light shines in, you have shadow lines, you're gonna notice them a lot more. So that's really what drove this. I mean, this is something we do a lot, especially when we're dealing with cabinetry or millwork, but this is throughout. We also flatten the floor, right? Yep. This is pretty traditional. This is kind of older framing, dimensional lumber. We were able to sister the joist by, you know, adding a joist to the side of it. Yep. But let's walk over to this uh, scenario here where we have, how big are they? 16 inch. 16 inch eye joists. That were 21 feet long. 21 feet long. And over the course of, or over the, the entire span of this room, some, you know, we had variations of up to about an inch out yep. of level. Now, going back to your comment about ultra modern, I said no baseboard. My meant by no baseboard is what you, you call it? Museum base. Museum base, and that's a quarter inch reveal above hardwood floor that has to be consistent throughout the entire space. Correct. So we'll get to the, the floor detail and the plaster detail at a future episode, but I wanna talk about how we were able to figure out how to sister these. Because you and I had talked and we said, well, how do we sister an eye joist? And not only you know how, but how do we do it in a manner that's okay by the manufacturer it's not gonna cause issues. So walk me through what we got going on here. Yeah, so we reached out to one of the manufacturers and they, you know, right off the bat, they were just like, oh, use a rim joist and you can, you know, sister up to the side. And, uh, so this is a rim joist, is that, is that we right? We actually used LSLs. So, this, so is, this, this is the same stuff as in the wall here? Yeah, just massive. But 16 inches tall. <laughs> yeah. So really big stuff, guys. Know they, I didn't even know they made them that big. So rather, so, I'm, I'm cutting you off, but yeah. the, so the rim joist was going to be adhered to the side? Yep, we're gonna do the same process, but the rim joist is only, it's an inch and eighth thick, and I wanted the inch and a half for bearing for the wood floor. You opted to go with the, the thicker inch and a half yep. LSL, and this is a, attached to the side of the eye joist. So you can actually see this right here is our eye joist, right? This is our existing eye joist. You can kind of see the, the web down here. And that, uh, it's actually a good spot you're pointing to as well, because that's some of the issues we ran into is see how that top cord is actually cut? Right here. Yeah. So when that cord is cut, you actually have to block, I believe it's two foot on either side of that cut. And so like that section there would be infilled with plywood on either side. Now, granted, some of this has been left out just for so we can film it. Yeah, and, then, and we also, you guys just wrapped up the seal. So this is, you know, this is not an example of what we're doing. No. But instead, you can see it on this side. Yeah. Is this, you know, 16-inch LSL 
you, this is full height now. Full and that, height. And that has been attached to the top and bottom cord of our eye joist. Glued and screwed. Glued and screwed. So you're using like a polyurethane glue. Yep. And then everything gets screwed. And this is setting an entire flatness across the entire floor. Level flat. Now that the floor is flat, you guys are prepping for hydronic heat. But what are next steps now that the steel is complete? So next step is we got to set our ceiling. Um, we actually have some recess lights, but not your average recess lights. It's a extruded aluminum track, very similar. Like I feel like it's unfair to call it a recess light. I know it's so much more. Right? If you guys are familiar with what we use for under cabinet lighting, we use an aluminum extrusion. It's about three quarters of an inch thick and you put that LED tape light in it and then we pop in a diffuser. Yeah. It's like that on it's, steroids. It's exactly. And how big is it? four inches wide and the track is also four inches tall and you can get it and it's already going to have flanges built into it so you can plaster right up to it. So it gets plastered flush with the ceiling. Yep. So that means you are leaving from our strapping to um, the framing above is about four inches to allow that thing to be recessed because yep. that this ceiling is continuous height all the way throughout the, the, the space, yep. correct? Yep. Because all the space, it's all connected. So you want to have that same ceiling height. Now to add complexity, it's round. Correct. So it's a round piece of aluminum extrusion that is four inches tall that we have to build a ceiling for and then plastered in place. Yep. So once we get through our ceiling details, what's after, what are we jumping into after that? Then we'll start our, all the interior walls. And we got some rounded walls for this oval bedroom that are uh, going to be challenging, but it'll be fun. Where, where are you going to start? We're going to start with the oval? Yeah, we have our center point, so we'll lay it all out on the floor. Um, cut our top and bottom plate out of plywood using a router with a jig on it. And, um, but then we also, it's pretty critical where we stop the curve and start because the back wall actually, it, it pretty much connects like from this post to that post over there. That's flat and then the two sides are just curved. Yeah, so it is really, so in a future episode, we'll definitely walk you through kind of how we're going to do this oval layout. Yep. Um, we also have the complexity of not only an oval wall, but an oval niche that's plastered in place. Correct. So there's a lot of considerations here. You know, we're, I know we're going to have our um, museum based detail. We're going to use an aluminum piece of uh, extruded uh, shadow reveal, and we're going to have that custom bent to our to radius. The wall. Yep. And then that way we can kind of screed our, our plaster up the wall. And then this oval bedroom essentially dictates the rest of the space, which becomes the closet as well as the bathroom. Yep. So as always, guys, we really appreciate you following along. This is our Western Master Suite project. Stay tuned for a future episode. As always, you can find myself on Instagram at NSBuilders. And I'm at Mike.Hume. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.